Hello, boys and girls. My name is Altusti, and welcome back to another River Guide episode. Today, we look at the Crystallina, which is a small right hand side contributory uh, to the Metals of Rhine, which in turn flows into the Forder Rhine in Dysentis. This section is short, only one kilometer in length, and after one third, the Crystallina flows into the Metalsur. However, the whole section is called Crystallina and it is great fun creaking section. The put-in is near the bridge of the Lukmanier mountain pass. It is the third creek the road crosses on the right valley side coming from below, more or less. The put-out is above a 15 meter high impassable fall. Depending on the water level, you can put in above the bridge with the first difficult crack directly under the bridge or further down. For this guide, I combined footage from different years, so the water levels differ. The lowest we had was about 2 cubic meters per second at the put-in. As the crystallina or the metals do not have an online measuring point, you usually look at the level of the Semvitschke Rhine one valley over. The whole section can be scouted from the meadow on the right, which is highly recommended for first timers. There is also a pass going through it that can be used to fetch the cars afterwards. We never had enough water or courage to put in above the bridge. The first part below is not too steep and there are some nice sections over stone plates and between rocks. Due to this nature, elbow protectors are advised. Once the creek flattens out, the water thins out as well and you might become stuck just above the first bedrock crevice. So you can use the opportunity to take a closer look and making some calendar photos. There are two options down into the crack prop. The easier one, which we always took due to the low water levels, is the narrow fissure from the right. Be prepared for an uneven landing as the crack will turn the boat along its axis. The other option is to drop in from the left side, but this requires a bit more water to flow over the bedrock edge. It can also happen that there is not enough water at all and you then can drop in from the ledge. The way down into the pool flows almost bobsled run-like onto the boulder with a cushion that will turn you to the right. The next drop goes around a corner and there is a rock right in the middle, fortunately only in the flat exit. It seems best to try to pass on the left side. The flow proceeds with drops over smaller boulders and around curves. It is a bit narrow and there are plenty of possibilities to get stuck. This is followed by a narrow passage through rocks on the left side or a more dry route on the right. On the following few meters it flattens out a bit and one has to look out for the best way with the most water. The metals of Rhine from the left brings about the same amount of water as the Crystallina. Shortly thereafter you get out on the right side as there is a waterfall into a crack that cannot be run at low water levels and I would advise against it at higher flows. The route would be on the left side over the bedrock and then drop in at the last possible moment. 
On the right side, there is a nice gully that can be used for a rock start into the pool below. The curler into the next pool is best taken from the right and over the wave top towards the left. The next drop is taken on the left over a rock plate. Now we are at the top of a 5 meter high rock slide. In the approach, there are three rock bars that need to be considered for the route. Below, there is an eddy on the right side, which is basically a garage. Very hard to get out. Therefore, the ideal approach is to be on the left side. The bars above make this difficult. I found the easiest way is to approach right and then let the water push you to the left. You can even take the eddy on the top left, but make sure that you turn your boat enough to not end up on the other side. With the right technique and a booth, you can even jump over the cushion at the bottom. The next few hundred meters are easier again. If you had a look at the creek beforehand, you know that the final fall comes next. You might get out above it on the right side to take another look. Maybe help paddlers getting the right entry chute and to take even more focus. The difficult part here again is the approach through rock cracks and keeping to the right. Once you pass the boulder on the right, everything else happens like on rails, at least at low water levels. The nose at the end of the chute pushes the nose of the boat upwards so that the danger is a flat landing which is not good for your back. What you can do is turn your upper body to the right downriver and then your kayak will follow. Only at higher water levels there is a danger that you might have enough speed to touch the opposite wall. We even had so low water levels that at the drop the rear touched the rock face at the bottom right before hitting the water. From the pool below, there are two more steps, right then left. Now you reach the pool above the waterfall and it is time to get out on the right side. From here, there are different options for the continuation of the paddling day. You can do it a second, third or more time, or you can carry the kayaks down around the fall and the following canyon with a siphon and continue with the upper part of the metals Orion. I have two additional videos on the Crystallina, one of them almost a complete footage of the run. So if you want to see more, you should definitely check those out. They are along with other information linked down below in the description. If you found this guide helpful, please consider leaving a like and if you don't want to miss the next video, hit the subscribe button. Until then, goodbye!